There have been a number of human bodies found in bogs. These bodies have been mainly found in northern and western Europe, with some of these bodies entering the bogs up to 10,000 years ago. So why are these bodies so well preserved, and what are they actually doing in the bogs in the first place? Well, the conditions in the peat bogs are normally acidic, with low levels of oxygen, and a low temperature. These conditions slow decomposition of the body down dramatically, also virtually pickling the body as the acidic liquid seeps into the body. The sphagnum moss in the bogs also starts to leach calcium from the bones, making the bodies more flexible. However, those bodies that have been in the bogs for thousands of years may experience significant levels of decomposition, sometimes only leaving thin skeletal remains behind. When the bodies go into the bog, they're generally lying in the water and lying on top of the semi-solid surface of the bog. As time goes on, more layers of deposits form on, the, on the top of the body. The weight of these peat deposits can slowly crush the body. Because the pressure from the extra layers of the peat increases very gradually, the body ends up much flatter than it went into the bog. But the bones and the internal organs and even the skin can remain intact. This lack of damage means that this purely visual inspection of the body may not reveal how long the body has actually been in the bog. So instead, carbon dating and any surviving possessions on the person may be used to identify how long the body has been in the bog. While there are some bog bodies from both medieval and prehistoric periods, it does seem to be a large proportion of bodies that date from the Iron Age. So what caused the bodies to go into the bogs at this time? Well, there may be different causes for each individual, but we can look at some similarities and try to draw some conclusions from them. Now, the first notable feature appears to be about two males for every female bog body. Most of the bodies are relatively young. Next is that most of the bodies seem to be, have significant marks of violence on their bodies, with some of them being stabbed, strangled, beheaded, and then often having an object placed on top of them, preventing them from floating to the surface. Now these injuries are not universal on the bog bodies. Some of the reported injuries have been confused with the compression and the weight of the peat pressing down on the bodies over time. The final fact appears to be that most of the people in the bogs were healthy when they went into the bog. These people had generally good diet, their bodies were well groomed at the time they died. More few, few possessions have been found on the bodies also seem to be a relatively high quality. This means that the People were relatively high status, not just some mistreated serf or slave. So if we put all these circumstances together, it doesn't appear that many of the bog people, ones who just blundered into the bogs in the dark, or went there fleeing some ferocious battle, or that they were a method of disposing of the elderly, infirm, or otherwise burdensome members of society. Instead, it would appear these people were deliberately put into the bog. Now, this could be the result of some form of criminal activity. A bog person could have been a criminal or coward, put into the bog as a punishment, a way of the locals getting rid of an embarrassment. Alternatively, the person that was a murder victim was placed in the bog as a way of hiding the body. High status victim could also mean they were a failed leadership rival, or were placed in the bog as some kind of form of offering to appease the local gods. Now, putting all these pieces together, it does appear that the most common reason for the surviving bog bodies is rather mundane reason of murder. Now, whether this was a consequence of a robbery or some other reason again, each murder is likely to have their own particular circumstances. However, what may be generally overlooked in the bog bodies is something called survivorship bias. There may initially be many more bodies in the bogs. However, only a relatively small number of the bodies survived into the modern era. So those bodies that went into the bogs during periods of warmer weather, those that weren't pinned down by heavy objects being placed on top of them, and those that were growing on the sphagnum moss rather than in the water, those bodies wouldn't have actually left any recognisable remains behind today. So the evidence we have is possibly more unusual and deliberate deaths with the normal, more accidental deaths leaving nothing behind to find.